When an individual dies, it seems to be that according to what religion you subscribe to, or if you subscribe to no religion, uh, there are three possible destinations you may have after you die. So a very widespread one is um, taught by theists. People believe in some form of God, some form of um, supreme deity, is that according to how you've acted or what you've believed, your destiny may be in an eternal state of bliss, which is usually called heaven, or perhaps an external state of darkness and unpleasantness, sometimes called hell or purgatory. So that's one possible destination. And it's a very widely uh, accepted one. Amongst people who are not particularly religious, uh, secularists, the belief seems to be that when you die, you, <laughs> you have no destiny, you, you cease to exist. The body breaks up, material form breaks up, consciousness has no support any longer and ceases and that's the end of you. So in this model, you didn't exist, you come into existence for a given time and then you cease to exist. Many people accept that and it seems to be a fairly widespread belief amongst people who are not religious. And then there are several religions that teach that there is some form of rebirth or reincarnation. So for example in, in Hinduism, not all Hindus but many Hindus believe that when you die you are reincarnated. That is, your Atman, your soul, or your, your, your true self, simply uh, goes to and animates a new life form. Hmm? And that according to how you believe, or what you, how you've acted, which God you worship, gradually you, 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 you are born into a more and more advantageous life and eventually you attain enlightenment or something like that. Um, there was a religion before Buddhism about, it preceded Buddhism by about 10 or 15 years called Jainism. A very lovely religion actually, very similar to Buddhism. So they taught a fairly similar thing that, that there is a soul and then when the body disintegrates at death, that soul passes on to another body and animates that body and a new life begins. Um, there are some other smaller and perhaps less significant religions that teach some form of that. And there are some spiritual movements like um, theosophy and some new age movements that teach some form of rebirth. And of course, Buddhism teaches a very clear and precisely uh, explained idea too. Uh, that we, when we die, we are reborn, and that process will continue until such time as we attain enlightenment. And then the process of uh, birth, life and death and rebirth ceases. So I just want to share with you a few thoughts about these three possible uh, destinies. Take the first one. So I've always had a bit of a problem with the idea that uh, when we die we go to either eternal bliss or eternal punishment. Because th this model uh, presupposes that some divine being has brought us into existence and will make a decision about our destiny after we die. So that's rather problematic when we think 
take this scenario. In the world, even in modern industrial societies, not all fetuses come to completion. So sometimes a month before or two months before a baby is born, it simply dies. can be different reasons for that. Or sometimes a child is born and after a few hours or a week or two, for whatever reason, the child dies. A terrible tragedy. Or if you go to developing countries where medical facilities are not so good and what have you, child mortality can be very high. So a large number of children, 10-15% of children, perhaps die before they get to the age of five. Now if there were a deity who was concerned about our destiny, why would he, she or it, create a being only to have it die before it was born, or as soon as it was born? And if it is true that our destiny depends on what we believed, or how we behaved. What can we say of a child who died at the age of eight months? It had no beliefs. It's never done anything, right or wrong. What happens to it? What's its destiny? And then there's the problem of good and bad. So according to some faiths, your destiny is de dependent entirely on what you believed. So that seems to me to raise an ethical problem. So for example, let's say there's a religion which says good or bad, your future destiny depends entirely on what you believed. Okay? Not how you behaved, but what you believed. So over here we have somebody of religious religion A. He's a decent person, he's a good person, and when he dies he goes to heaven. This seems okay. Over here we have somebody from religion A, and he's not a nice person. He made a lot of money, and he cut a lot of throats while kicking his way up into the corporate world. And when he got up there he used his money for all sorts of nefarious reasons. Uh, but he made donations to that religion. He claimed, he professed to, to follow it. And then when he got older, he really did become quite religious, despite the fact that for much of his life he's done some really bad things. He's hurt a lot of people on the way up. And yet because he believes in the God A, he goes to heaven. Over here, there's somebody who's not from religion A. He's from religion B. And he's a simple person, and all of his life he's been basically good, kind, for the most part. He has been generous to his neighbours. He's well known around the town as being helpful to everybody. He does all sorts of good things. He's basically a nice person. He's brought up his family well, his children love him, as does his wife, etc. But because he didn't believe in religious A, he goes to eternal punishment. Now that seems to me to be problematic. It seems to me to be ethically and morally problematic. How can it be just that a good person is punished whereas a bad person is rewarded simply based on what they believed. Now I could give quite a few other reasons why this, the theistic model, has got serious problems. So I reject that. Until somebody can explain it differently to me, uh, I'm not in favour of this belief. So the second destiny is that uh, we didn't exist, we come into existence, and when we die, that's the end of it. Well, that certainly appears to be what <laughs> happens. I knew Fred, we've been hanging around together for years, 
he died and I've never seen him again. <laughs> okay, so my eyes, my experience tells me oh, that's a better explanation. It doesn't really seem to have any moral objections to it. But there are some objections. This is one that I've always thought is a reasonable objection to that theory. So, you, there's no existence, and then two people have intercourse together. A teaspoonful of semen comes into contact with a microscopic egg. Hmm? And in 12 months, you have a fully developed human being. And now we know that even before 12 months, that fetus in the womb apparently can already dream. I saw a video some time ago, and it showed a fetus, a seven-month baby, sucking its thumb and scratching itself. <laughs> okay. So it appears to be that mental qualities are already in the mind of that child before it is born. Now, when the child is born, within a year or two, it is starting to show that it can already think and reason and remember and problem solve. By the time it's five or six, all of the tendencies, although in a um, less developed form, are already current in that child's mind. Mm? All the things, all the absolutely miraculous things that the human mind can do. It can conceive things and imagine things and remember things and create things and it can create great literature and it can um, 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 manipulate words to write wonderful books and it can think of how it would be possible to send a rocket to the moon and all these sorts of things. It's all already there. How did that develop in such a short time from just the meeting of this sperm and egg? How is that possible? So. I've never really heard any good reason as to how you can go from nothing, not just to something, but to human consciousness and all that implies within such a short time. So that second theory doesn't really satisfy me either. And then we've got the, um, the rebirth, reincarnation model, that destiny. Of these three, this seems to be most suitable to me. First of all, it is 100% just. In terms of moral behavior, what you do is roughly what you get. Secondly, it's got nothing to do or very little to do with what you believe. It's got to do with how you behave. Now, when we behave as human beings, we behave within a, a, a social context. So I can pick up a book and I can close a book or I can put water in a, in a cup and drink it. And None of those things have any consequences on others. They're not moral or immoral. All my moral and immoral acts imply some sort of interaction with another being, usually a human being, occasionally an animal. Uh -huh. So my moral and immoral acts all impact upon other beings. So it has an impact upon me and it has an impact upon others. Therefore, it seems to me that this is an extremely critical thing. It has widespread consequences, how I act. And therefore, it is of great importance, and it would seem to me which God I believe in is really not as important as how I interact with others. And therefore, the idea that it is your, uh, your karma that uh, influences, not determines, but 
influences your 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 future seems to me to be admirable and credible hmm? so for me of these three destinies that one seems to be best <laughs>